David is saying, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. This one more time gives us the idea that our way of life somehow is arrayed or full of snares and temptations here and there. The idea repeatedly appears in the Lord's prayer phrase which says, lead us not into temptation. One more time, this has or bears the same connotation that our way of life is full of temptations. In the book, Education, written by Ellen G. White, on page 7, paragraph 2, I read it in your hearing. It says, every person must face the practical realities of life. Its opportunities, its responsibilities, its defeats, its successes. Life comes with a variety of things. It comes with successes. It comes with defeats. It comes with trials. So, when Jesus is saying, pray so that you may not fall into temptation. Does not simply mean that temptations, that trials, that tribulations will not come our way. But it means that out of trials and tribulations, we will emerge conquerors. We will come up with sound mind we will approach the temptation as victors and not as victims. Oh. And then G. White continues to write. She says, how he is to meet this experience, whether he is to become master or victim, of circumstances depends largely on his preparation to cope with them. And where is our preparation? Our preparation is in our prayer closets. Our preparation is on our study table when we are studying the word of God. Our preparation is when we pray and Hence, Jesus is saying, pray so that you may not fall into temptation. Paul, in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 4, puts it this way. He says, though we walk in the flesh, you see me right now, I'm a physical being. We do not war after the flesh. Our warfare is not in the physical world, but it is in the spiritual world. Our enemy is spiritual and we cannot see our enemy with our naked eye. Though we are physical beings, for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Someone may say, when I'm in circumstances like this, when I'm in trouble, 
when the devil is attacking me left and right, left, right and center, and God seems not to be caring, someone may, may blame God. But let me tell you the secret. Psalm 115 verse 16, God himself is saying, the heavens and even the heavens are given are the Lord's and but the earth have he given the, the earth to the sons of men to the children of men so God does not want to interfere he has given us the earth and his is the heaven and the heavens he cannot interfere with our business he comes as per invitation. Okay. And we only invite him through prayer. Hence, there are messages as those found in Ezekiel 22 verse 30, where God himself is saying, I sought for a man who can stand in the gap so that the hedge may be meant so that I may not destroy it, but I found none. If we are not inviting God into uh, the affairs of our life, we will remain as we are. We will stay right where we are and circumstances in our lives will never change. Hence, God is also inviting us. In Psalm 50, verse 15, he says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. God is expecting you not to blame God when you are in trouble, but to call unto him so that he delivers us. Hence, a lot of promises emerge in the Bible. I will just quote one in Isaiah 54, verse 10. God is saying, For the mountains shall depart, the hills shall be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. Pray so that you may not enter into temptation. Let us live lives of prayer. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray when music goes on. Our kind and loving Father, we humbly come before you. We realize that, Lord, we need to be having spiritual eyesight because our warfare is waged spirit world. We therefore invite you to be with us and to resuscitate in us the spirit of prayer, the spirit of being prayerful at all times. In Jesus' mighty name, it is my humble prayer.